Hello, this is my uh, tic-tac-toe game and basically if you win your set's going to blink in green and then the grid will reset. If the computer player wins then its set is going to blink in red and the grid will reset. If you get a tie then it's going to blink in purple and the grid will reset so I'm going to adjust the cell count here. Um, so I'm going to tie right quick And the computer opponent works in a way that if only one of your moves is on the grid, it's going to make an adjacent move, so anywhere around your move. And that just makes it harder for you to set up your sets. And then after that, it's going to block your moves if it can. And after that, it's going to complete moves if it can. Uh, basically, it's going to prioritize uh, completion moves over def defensive moves so that if it can win it's going to win and not bother trying to block you but you can trick it in a way that you have two possible sets it's just like you how you would trick a human in tic-tac-toe you'll have your grid set up so that you can win in two different ways so it has to make a defensive move but you can still win it on the other move anyway so it doesn't matter so basically, for the computer player to make smart moves, I'm using for loops to iter iterate through the rows first, and then the columns. And I have counters that count the amount of X's and the amount of O's there are. And I look around. Say if there's two O's here, I'm going to look around these two O's for a blank cell. And if there's a blank cell, then that's where I want the computer player to play. Um, it's it's pretty smart but it can't play logically beyond a 3x3 three three grid in certain in some cases and I'm not gonna bother doing that because that's overkill for um, for a sample app uh, so here's the computer player class basically you can set it to random so that's completely random instead of logical you can delay its moves using this uh, timer interval so you got my make adjacent move method. You can get the points of the cells, of course, because they're in a multi-dimensional array. And random, logical. And then I've got some helper properties here. So the current team, the opposing team, is X team. That's a bit redundant. And then, of course, the idle time. Then here's the cell blinker class. This is a static class that aids in blinking the cells. And basically, everything's straightforward except you need a um, an event to be raised once the cells are finished blinking so that you can re-enable the grid. 